everybody, how are y'all doing? In this series, we will be looking at different words, phrases, and acronyms from ancient times through today and examining them through both explanatory and critical lenses. Welcome to WTF Is. These episodes will focus on words which I have found in the course of doing the research necessary to produce the videos for my other series. I think these words deserve a closer examination and would be edifying for myself and others. While the first acronym we'll be looking at doesn't fit the first category, got it by watching another Dear Mr. Atheist video for pleasure, it definitely fits the second and third. For the first Pride Month in which I'm a creator, I've decided to explore the meaning of GRSM, Gender, Romantic, and Sexual Minorities, and whether it can or should replace the acronym LGBTQ+. I'm going to go through the usage of both terms and we'll see where we end up. Let me first say that no matter how hard I try, I will most likely say something out of ignorance which some in the community at large will take umbrage with. When this happens, please let me know so I can fix it. To be upfront and honest, I've identified as a cisgender heterosexual male for the majority of my life and I've faced no hardship or belittlement because of this. And I still feel that way most of the time, although I now know differently about myself, very few others do. So, over the course of this video, we'll go over the histories of each acronym, my reassessment of myself, which is a never-ending but rewarding task, plus the stories of two others who are at different stages in that journey of self-examination. I'm joined in this exploration by Dallas Begno and Lewis Hinkle, aka Shorty Beard. For those who aren't aware, Lewis is my producer and editor, just be upfront about everything. Dallas is a friend of Lewis's from way back. She is transgender, and you can read all about her struggles and triumphs in the process of finding out who she was at dallasbegno.com. That's D-A-L-L-A-S-B-E-G-N-A-U-D.com. Unfortunately, we had technical difficulties in the beginning and didn't realize until too late that we weren't recording, so the first part of our conversation is lost to the winds of time. Another thing that I'd like to say is that in hindsight, um, the conversation that we're about to listen to didn't quite cover all of the issues that I said it was going to, um, so I'll probably have to make a follow-up video just to address some of the issues which weren't covered. So now to the conversation. I know for both of us, just in general, as far as the channel's concerned and the content we've been creating, like uh, me personally, where I'm at is, you, you mentioned evangelicals, like I'm, I'm not a Christian or a practicing Christian anymore. I'm, if I have to pick a label right now, that's gonna fall under atheist agnostic very specifically chosen in that order because I am very much a person of science and evidence and looking at things and my journey has gotten me to a point in life where I'm going, I'm not going to say no to the possibility of it and I know a lot of great people that I still love deeply that do believe that there is a higher power, God, whatever, but I'm not going to fault them for it. The yeah. only place where I start to have a problem is where you're belief and or faith you try to start dictating policy for others when you start right. trying to dictate how other people want to live or can live that's where i'm like nope go take your thing and go you know like go live and let live and let live you can believe whatever you want to believe but don't try to affect the way i live um so that's where i'm at when it comes to that kind of stuff and that said, I have not personally come out of the closet as far as um, identifying as pansexual to like anybody from the old church groups. You know, like I have, I still know a lot of those people on Facebook. I have not made that public yet, and 
that's actually thanks to uh, some advice that you gave me, which was, you know, you're not obligated to tell anybody anything. You do this under your own when you want, how you want. It doesn't yep. matter. You don't owe anybody else anything. So, like, the people that need to know and matter, no. Um, and that's been really good. And that's why we like GSRM, too, because I like it because it gives me very clear kind of spectrum categories for someone who has an organized mind like sexually i'm pansexual i don't have a preference romantically gyno romantic like i'm gonna lean towards female presenting persons yeah. um and then what was what was gender the gender i'm i'm a man <laughs> i'm a cisgender man as far as that's concerned like and I think that very well roundedly defines or helps me define like, okay, this is, this is, and I don't, I don't think it should be narrowing. Like no. if you don't fit into all this, then you know, you know, you're out of luck. Um, that I think the whole point of all this, and that's why we want to talk about these terms is for inclusivity and making everybody feel more included but anyway that's that's me that's where i'm at with all that stuff um <clears throat> yeah it's really interesting actually because uh for the majority of my life i have identified as a cisgendered hetero male um i hadn't even until very recently considered the romantic aspect of it um, and lo and behold, uh, it turns out that I'm an aromantic. Um, I, it's weird because like I read, um, like romance scenes in books and I, and I watch romance scenes in movies and I, I feel like, I feel like some of what they're getting, but it's like I've never felt that way in my real life. Um, and and so that that's definitely different. Um, I I mean gender gender still I'm still cisgendered. Um, I yeah I'm comfortable in my own skin um, and. And that's and that's okay, you know. Like that that's one of the things that that I think everybody needs to just take a chill pill about is that when you're cisgendered, you're 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 given this default in society that says you're okay, and um, it's unfortunate that everybody else. Cisgender, I mean, uh, transgender or intersex or what have you, aren't told that. Yeah. And so, like, I've had to um, to look at that uh, honestly. Um, and um, as far as far as um, sexual. <laughs> I I I am I'm definitely uh uh gynophilic and uh but but I don't think I think it's just it's just the presentation you know uh it doesn't I don't think anyway I haven't had an opportunity to find out but I don't think that the the parts matter. It's just, you know, I just, I'm a face man, <laughs> you know? Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm a weird character. Welcome to the club. Yep. And that, and that, that's one of the things that, that, um, I don't know. I think of it that way. Like weird is normal to me. Yeah. Like everybody's, yeah. nobody's, 
normal. I mean, yeah. what is normal? Like everyone, that's why I like, I mean, that's why everything is a spectrum. Like yeah. what you're saying, we were talking about that the other day, like you're mostly hetero, but you're like, I'm a little, I'm a little gay. It's, it's, and it's okay. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, there's nothing. And, but see, that's the, I don't know. It, like, that's where my brain always struggles with labels and acronyms. Cause you know, I'm, I'm the hopeless romantic, the one that wants the world where it's like, why, why do we need that? Why does anybody need that? Why can't we all just be, you know, and like be happy and love each other and like, but that's such a pipe dream, right? <laughs> Apparently. Well, I mean, the sad reality is the human mind likes binary things. It likes things either or. It takes a level of maturity and a level of empathy to add anything else. Just out of our basic neuroscience, the way our brain classifies the world. This is good. This is bad. This is edible. This is poisonous. This is a man. This is a woman. And all of a sudden, I step in. And even though I'll, you know, put on the makeup, I'm on the hormones, it's important to my kids that I keep this voice. So right there, there are binary rules. Plus, I've got a penis. So I don't fit in the system and they don't know what to do with me. And a lot of times fear just leads to anger because it's not good. And I've had to kind of make my peace with that. Yeah, um, that that's one of the things that I think um the the push for inclusion has definitely um brought about a shift in attitudes because um on the gay marriage issue it it wasn't that long ago that we weren't even talking about civil partnerships um it wasn't that long ago that like Ryan White was killed, you know. Um, so, but 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 their inclusion into the broader entertainment industry has um, exposed them to a broader audience, I would say, and uh, I think the same is true of transgender people. Um, the yeah. more the more you see that they're just people, that they don't have horns, they don't have hooves, they don't have <laughs> they, they don't know what's hiding under this wig. Yeah, exactly. Angel in the streets, devil in the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I would really like to hear um, your perspective on the uh, LGBTQ acronym and. Um, whether it should have, uh, like whether or not the initialization of that, um, is enough and whether or not GRSM could be not necessarily a replacement for LGBTQ, but a, an addition is what I'm seeing. Like, so in other words, everyone who is LGBTQ is a member of the G G GRSM community. But not everybody who is in the GRSM community is LGBTQ. Maybe. Anyway, you have the floor. It's interesting when you get to acronym specifically because transgender gets you know one letter on there. Um, but underneath that T is a huge umbrella. There's people who are ready to jump off the cliff and go all the way into the gender that I, I want to live as a woman. I'm on hormones. I love that I'm growing breasts. Uh, I love walking out of the house like this. That was terrifying at the exact time. I have other friends who are non-binary. One of my coworkers at my current store that I work at with Whole Foods Another one at my previous store, another one at the coffee shop I worked at, that would all say that they they prefer that acronym and they don't feel like they fit in either world. They're in the middle, um, and they look it. Uh, 
that also fits in transgender. Uh, so does a cis man who prefers feminine clothing and feminine affectations. There's an, or, or people that prefer to look like this one day or the next day to walk out the house with you know, no hair, no makeup, all butch. All of that falls under the teeth with transgender. And so for me, uh, and again, like you said, I, I am not the spokesperson for the transgender community. Um, I'm a spokesperson for myself and my friends that I know. What I would say is I personally just want people to feel welcome. I want people to feel included. And most importantly, if someone is comfortable finding themselves in a label, I welcome that label, whatever it is. I was talking to, so at the last store I worked at, we had a uh, bisexual woman who was married to a woman. We had a pansexual woman who was married to a woman. We had a bisexual woman who was dating a man. We had myself as transgender. We had our boss who was gay and married to a man. Basically, there were like two cis, uh, heteronormative people on the team. And we were all kind of laughing about the acronyms and how there was the push to add four letters after Q. And like I said, I want people to feel involved, but my goodness, at some point, I'm going to get tired of typing and saying things. Yeah, yeah. that's you know? we found that in our research, right? LGBTQIASA2AA or something. Like, I don't even remember what the full thing is. So one of my bi coworkers, the one who's married to a woman, said, uh, just use queer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then I find there's a, you know, there's a certain uh, very strongly feminist brand of lesbians who hate that word. So you can't make everybody happy. My thing is simply find your word that makes you happy. Use it if it's, you know, G-R-S-M. I'm perfectly fine with that. Whatever it takes to make you happy and for you to find and live your truth. I know for myself, in finding out who I am, especially when I repressed for the first 38 years of my life, um, it was, because when I was younger, the, while the word transgender might have been known in some of the gay community and in academic circles, it wasn't the vernacular that normal people used. There was trans which meant I wanted to change my entire body, including cutting off my penis, which I have no interest in. I wanted to live as a woman, and I was also going to be attracted to men. And I knew I was attracted to women, so that meant I wasn't transsexual, so the only other option on the table was cross-dressing. And it never felt like a sexual fetish, but that's what the Christian counselors kept telling me. And it wasn't until I really did the deep dive and discovered the word transgender that I realized holy shit, this is me. And it took me 38 years to find the right word for who I am. So that's why I'm so, that's why you finding your label, go for it. Make no, up I a mean, new it's, it's, it's interesting uh, hearing you, like I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad for this, this today, not just because we get a different voice that's not ours uh, in a conversation and a perspective that, you know, I can't, fully grasp and understand just on a personal level sitting here and hearing you talk and saying that like all those things incorporated under that under that t like um it's yeah. it like i i don't know if i i probably won't include this in the actual video and it, like it's always i'm always careful with uh how 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 far of an admission you make with this because as i was telling him yesterday um i think the temptation with too many people when you start having conversations with people anybody that's a member of one of these communities lgbtq gsrm um there's a temptation because it's a fetish to a lot of people and it's a yeah. so there's a temptation to be like "Ooh, what's it what do you do what are you into what are you about and it's like that's not appropriate you wouldn't ask any normal person that yeah. question so why would you ask someone that's a member of this community that question but like you talking about that and i'm like thinking about myself going no like i don't want to go out of the house dressed as a woman and i don't feel like a woman and i don't want to be a woman or anything like that but there's certain articles of female things that like i enjoy wearing them they yeah. create pleasurable situations <laughs> for me you know like 
Oh, so I technically, based on what you were just saying and talking about, like, like technically, part of that that like kind of starts to fall under transgender to a degree. And I'm like, I never thought of that that way or thought of myself that way. I'm like, no, I'm I'm cisgender because I'm very much a man. But sexually, I don't have a preference when it comes to gender. And yeah, there's like, I like to wear things and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't know. It's just so. It's an interesting it's, journey. Yeah, it's an interesting journey, and it's an interesting spectrum, and uh, it's it's fun. It's been fun and interesting, and the best word I can use, and I think you would agree, I think everyone would agree, is freeing. Like, yep, every step in discovery, and, and I don't know. It's 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 like for so long in my life, and I'm sure you have a, a, a similar reflection. For so long in my life, especially being a part of the church. And and a part of a faith and a religion, I felt like so many things in the world were a no. A, well, yes, that is going to be pleasurable and you will enjoy it and it might bring you happiness, but it's bad. Don't do right. that. And so the it becomes this, you constantly live in fear in a lot of ways of everything around you and, and yeah. the temptation of it. But suddenly whenever like for me personally suddenly once you don't believe in a religious system anymore and you're like i don't think that this is something i have to hold to suddenly the whole world opens up and op and things that you never thought were options open up and you're like yeah. wow there's a world out there and there's so much freedom and there's so much like that can be felt and expressed and shared and i, I it yeah. makes a person kind of wanted to ex to explode a little bit <laughs> like it's overwhelming but it's fantastic at the same time mm -hmm. um like it's it's inspired me to get back into my art that i used to do when i was a child and i've been painting and making beautiful things and producing something which i always thought was an important part of life like you should be producing something because i think that regardless of what you believe about a god or anything i think we are beings that need to create and make things yeah definitely okay. I know, but I know, like, as far as you talked about the liberation of being yourself, uh, one, of the, one of the biggest ones for me, for someone who's transgender, and this is a commonality for a lot of us, is um, I didn't live in my body for most of my life. And that's not something I necessarily realized until I was having sex with my girlfriend. And for the first time, I didn't have to go somewhere in my mind. Because uh, with my ex-wife, while, she, you know, I feel pretty good about our sex life. We were intimate. Um, there was emotional depth to a certain extent, but I was never really in the room because I always had to fantasize about who I really thought I was in order to enjoy. So I didn't realize until my current girlfriend, when we were having sex, it's like, holy shit, I can really be here right now. I can enjoy every single facet of this just because for the first time in my life, I like my body. It's not something I need to escape from. And and then you add to that the extra layer of the other person responding in a way where there's no judgment, there's no fear, there's no, you know, it's just acceptance. Yeah. And that, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, like, anybody, to anybody uh, watching anything, I don't know if this part goes in or not, but I mean, to anybody watching anything, if you want a great... The most amazing sex life and sex experience, that's 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 where you want to be with your partner. Like, <laughs> truly knowing each other and yeah. accepting. Because, yeah, like that. If you're having to leave and go somewhere else, then that's, you know, something's not right. Yeah. yeah. It's been an incredible journey for me personally, and it feels amazing to know that there's an, this entire giant community of people out there. Um it's also interesting that there, you know, like that line, some of the stuff we were reading had that was showing that there was a, a kind of a problematic line there for some people because it starts to push into that inclusion starts to push into areas of, you know, some people wanting to incorporate pedophilia into that, incorporate other things that I think are not appropriate. So I think it's a very important distinction for us to make. And I think anyone who's a part of this conversation to make of, consensual all of these acronyms have to do with communities of people that everything is consensual yeah we do not include in that i do not include in that any any person who uh, can't give consent can't give consent or won't 
seek consent. You know, that's, no. No. Um, so, yeah, things like pedophilia and rape are, are ab- absolutely out, uh, unless that's your role-playing fetish, fantasy fetish for some of those things. But, hey, that's no that's consent. a private thing. That's between you and your partner, you know. And but huh? in, And there's still consent involved in Right, exactly. Yes. And there's still consent and care and love and all of that involved in those things, and that's what's important. Yes. Um, so, no... You can't have sex with your dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sparky can't give his consent, so. Um. I, I'm just, I'm just imagining the the responses I'm gonna get, and yeah, that's gonna be a majority of them. And I mean, I think for even for people within the community, and so uh, this is something else I'd like to ask you about, uh, Dallas, because this is something that affects you directly. And uh, I personally probably will never experience uh, this level of persecution because for all intents and purposes, for the most part, my life still looks like a heteronormative day-to-day life. Um, But... There is a lot of – it's not just from outside the community directed towards the community, like from heteronormative people towards LGBTQ, GSRM uh, community. But within the community, there is a lot of fear and hate and division and, you know, in infighting and stuff like that. And especially when it comes to the transgender part of that community. Um enlighten us a little bit on your experience there where appropriate i mean i don't want to i have not uh, everyone i i I try to live very vulnerable way now i lay myself open because i hid for so long uh i mean anybody who finds me on any social media can immediately find my blog and they can read all the deep dark shit um so as a result, like the infighting, like from what I've heard, you know, gay guys can be fairly catty towards the trans community. Um, and I know TERFs also uh, can be pretty violent towards the trans community. And you know what? It's true. I lived a life of privilege. I've 30. heard that word recently and stuff, TERF, but uh, yeah. yeah I'm... Uh, it's trans exclusionary radical feminists. Ah, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Sorry, please continue. It, but I don't really, I mean, like I said, I lived a life of white male privilege for 38 years. So I understand some resentment about that and then me just trying to step into their world and call someone like that sister. It's like, no, I, I can respect that you were hesitant to embrace me. But all that said, I found that when I lead with my fears, when I lead with my insecurities, when I lead with my humanity, um, all the other stuff so far falls away. Or if they're, you know, being catty, they're being catty behind my back. They're not doing it to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, good. Well, and... I mean, I, that that makes me happy for you personally in your experience that you haven't had to, like, since reaching a point of acceptance and really living it. Like, you, you haven't had that bad experience with it. I, you know, it... Yeah. I'm always heartbroken that it took the journey that it did for you to get where you're at. Um, of course, but proud of you that you're there (laughs) and very, very happy about it. Um, yeah, turfs, turfs are a problem. Um, mm. but to be fair, that bitterness doesn't just magically appear. Oh no. Oh no. That That would, yeah, that was built over years and years and years, and like, and they feel that the the small amount of gains that they have made as feminists could be taken away by men pretending to be women, basically. And I understand where it's coming from. I disagree, but I understand where it's coming from. I mean, and that's important in any conversation is to try to put yourself in all those perspectives and look at it like, you know, when we when we've done topics before in the past that we're dealing more with uh, some of the crazy, the crazy, crazy evangelicals that are out there. Um, 
you know, ones that say things like all gays should be rounded up and eliminated or all Jews should be rounded up and eliminated because they're not the real people of God. Like that's a video we just tackled recently was a very anti-Semitic type of thing. And yeah, it's. It's depressing. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> it's very depressing, uh, the groups that are out there. I kind of lost my point there, but, um, yeah. I love that my life is expanding to incorporate friends and people that aren't heteronormative. Like, you know, yeah. like I, 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 I love expanding that, that lens and that world and seeing more. Because I know I'm not so black and white and cut and dry, you know? No one is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I mean, in, especially in the, the end, people that, that claim the, to be. In the end, isn't that the point of all of the these terms and everything is to say that, like, I don't know. I guess the point I want to make is that pride. It's Pride Month, and there's Pride parades going on all this month, and we all have reasons, and we are all part of this community in various different ways very differently you brian very differently than me and both of us very differently than you dallas um but what it, why does pride exist and what is it there for and i think it's because there's a large community of people that came before us that suffered a whole lot of persecution to get to this point yeah. and they deserve to be proud about yeah. surviving that and making it to this point um and they and deserve to have the recognition that exactly. we can give them. And I don't. No. I don't deserve to earn a spot in that. And I acknowledge that because I didn't go through that kind of persecution no. and stuff. But I am now a member going forward in a voice that will be a part of that community and an activist for it. Absolutely. Yep. You know. Anything else that you would like to add, Dallas, or say, or any anything plug? You are welcome to plug your blog, your website, anything else. But well, we're gonna you... do it anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah. Twitter. Uh, I mean, whatever your preferences are for that stuff. I write for myself ultimately. That like you talked, Lewis. You talked about creative expression. That's my creative expression. If other people want to find, they don't. They're still gonna pay the fucking you know domain name fees. Um, <laughs> no, my big thing is just simply. Uh, for two years, I was just trying to find antidepressants that would keep me alive. All I needed was to just take the fucking hormones. Uh, I'm on an anti-anxiety because of the changes in hormones and what that's done to my neurochemistry. But I laugh so much more. I smile so much more just because I'm moving into who I actually am. And I finally, it's taken a couple of years, but left the shame about that behind. Um, like my, my girlfriend says it really well. She says, I like my life. I sleep like a baby. There's no guilt involved. Uh, I would say the exact same thing. There's whenever you're living who you are, you sleep like a baby. No. Yeah. I love that. I love that. What she said. That's yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually I was thinking that's a pretty good place to end it on. Yep, that's absolutely a great place to end it on. That's a, a great thought to move forward with. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much for giving us some of your time this afternoon. It's one of those ones that I've been putting off just because I don't want to hurt my kids. So this was the perfect excuse for me to tell them, look, I have to dress up like myself. So you get to watch me put on the makeup. You get to watch me magically you know, quadruple the size of my boobs with silicone forms. So... Uh, yeah, this is the exactly the excuse that we needed to jump off the cliff together. Aww. Cool. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad we helped facilitate yeah. something like that. Well, thank you so much, Dallas. I appreciate it. And um, I'm going to keep reading the blog and looking forward to hearing stuff. And don't be a stranger. I mean, anytime. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Have a good day. Y'all, too. Bye. I'd like to echo something that Dallas said, which was that I consider myself in no way a spokesman for anyone but myself. I think of myself as an ally and as a member of the GRSM community. I invite y'all to share your story or perspective, and there will be another video. Anyway, I think it was a good conversation. Like I said, you can follow Dallas at DallasBegno.com for her blog, or on Twitter at, at DallasBegno. You can check out Shorty Beard's artwork on his Instagram page or his Twitter. 
although Instagram is his preferred platform. And if you'd like to see what's coming next, hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you could help out with a $1 monthly donation on Patreon, or want to give a one-time donation via PayPal, the information is in the description below. I can also be found on Twitter or Facebook at PandaClown. See you on the flip side. P-Pow.